this is a concern for a lot of in a lot of families. When do you know uh, when it's past the stage of being uh, just a good time, a fun pastime, and uh, a bigger problem than that? The difference between a gaming hobby and a gaming problem would begin with negative impact in your life, yet you continue to continue to play anyways. And so the red flags you want to be looking for are things like you no longer have control over your gaming, you're gaming more and more and more, it's never enough, you're no longer doing other activities or hobbies, sports, for instance, and you know, you're just really continuing to play even though it's having a negative impact. You're struggling in school, you're struggling in work, you're struggling in your relationships, and yet you're just continuing to game. How much were you playing? I played up to 16 hours a day, all day, every day. I was pretending to have jobs, deceiving my family, sneaking in through my bedroom window, dropped out of high school, didn't go to college. You know, it was really, you know, a significant thing in my life. And so, so what did uh, what you do to sort of, uh, to get out of it, to snap out of it? I'm fortunate that you know, I kind of hit a point of rock bottom and had this kind of wake up call of I need to make some changes. And I had a good relationship with my father who kind of said, you know, if you ever need anything, you can come to me. And so at that moment, I went to him and said, you know, I need some help. And can you help me find a counselor? And of course he did. And this counselor really helped me to begin to turn things around. And, you know, I, I think that it's important for anybody out there who may be struggling that asking for help is really important. It saved my life and I believe it can save theirs. Cam, what, what game were you playing or games? Well, so I was speaking to students today and, you know, they kind of made me feel like I was old, but I played <laughs> things like Counter-Strike or World of Warcraft or Starcraft. And, uh, you know, that's not like the Fortnite of today, but back then those games were really popular and really fun and engaging and games are different now, but, you know, those games were online multiplayer games, very competitive and they really had a grasp on me. Yeah, so what is it about the games that, that, that had such a grasp on you? Well, I think the games are designed to be very what the industry would call as engaging. And, you know, they're using behavioral psychology to make them as much fun and stimulating as possible. And, you know, I think that not only are they able to help you escape, but you're also able to socialize and you get to see your progress. And you're constantly rewarded for all the effort that you put in, which sounds good, but when you compare that to the way the real world works, which you're not always rewarded instantly. You don't get instant gratification. You know, you can find yourself wanting to play games more and more and more because you want to be validated. What is a healthy amount of gaming? A healthy amount really is just any amount that is not causing you to deprioritize other things in your life that are really important. I think for most ages, you know, especially adolescents, you want to be looking at kind of two hours or less a day, ideally not every day. And I think it's really important that if kids are under 10 years old, that they're really not playing a lot and not playing all the time. The average screen time currently for kids at two years or younger is three hours a day, which I think is pretty excessive and they don't really need it. And so, you know, just keeping it in balance, but keeping it to not be so much of a constant habit and it's more of a compliment to your life not an everyday thing okay so if somebody uh, in your family is uh is in their room or down in the basement for hours and hours on end and you know it's become you suspect it's become a problem how do you approach it what's the best way to do that it's difficult i don't want to kind of say otherwise but I, I think that it begins by becoming more educated on what the issue is and and why they might feel so drawn to games you know maybe there's some underlying mental health conditions like anxiety or depression underneath Maybe they're struggling with bullying at school or with their own self-esteem and they're feeling more validated through the games. And, you know, maybe they're really struggling with, like, social anxiety. So I think it's important that you're identifying, you know, why are they so drawn to these games and you begin to have conversations about that and really try to reduce conflicts because the conflicts are really just creating more tension, which then drives more escapism. And so my dad would always kind of we'd go for walks or we'd go for a drive in the car and those were safer environments for us to have conversations that weren't so charged.